died in the we arena, in the sports arenas of the day. So the idea of a, of a shrine for our heroes in a Hall of Fame is very appropriate. But imagine what we're going to see as we walk around. As I talk, as we're going to walk around here for about 15 minutes, all of these, we keep them in the church, and that is where we're going to see our heroes. You'll see the torture that most of these died in the arena, in the sports arenas of the day. So the idea of a shrine for our heroes is so gorgeous. Should we take our kids to see that? But you know, imagine you know, what we're going to see as we walk around. So I talk day. We're going to walk around here for about 15 minutes. Like all of these are these people screaming images of the murders. You'll see the torture that they're going to. They're made very graphic. But imagine you know, when Mel gets here for Sunday morning. My goodness, this was a gory movie. This is the most gory movie you could have ever seen. But you know, it's in Jerusalem or in Rome, the kids saw that every day because there were priests all over the place. And brothers and sisters were screaming. Had they not done this, we wouldn't be here today. Had they not been she the the price price of human life was treated cheap. But imagine you bring your kids here for Sunday morning mass. This was like a movie. This is the most gory movie you could have ever seen. And it's displaying, but it's not here to be gory. It's here to tell what price was paid for the brothers and sisters. And had they not done this, we wouldn't be here today. Had they not been willing to pay the price of murders, we would have never been here. Both Tertullian and Augustine both said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. You spill our blood. The word arena, by the way, means sand. They had white sand, and they would kill the Christians, and that red blood would hit the white sand, and the people in the auditorium and the, and the crowd would go crazy. Kill more. Kill more. And the blood would hit, and these Tertullian said, every time that blood hits there, 10 more Christians are going to rise up, and that's exactly what happened. How counter um, to the idea, if there's a club, and you're going to join the club and say that probably within 10 years of joining the club, you'll be killed because you're a member. You don't think the people would be joining that club, and yet Christianity, they did because the Romans had nothing worth living for. They knew their gods were mythical. They knew that there was nothing ultimately of value, but Christians came, and they said there's something worth living for, and there's something even worth dying for. And Justin Martyr, one of the reasons he became a Christian is he said, how can those Christians die like that? If they're criminals, we're taking them out as criminals and we're punishing them and we're killing them in the arenas and we're cutting off their heads and we're burning them and feeding them the lions. When we take them out, if they're such evil people, how can they die with such nobility? We Romans die very poorly. We curse and we scream. But those Christians, they help one another right to the last moment. They're praying and singing hymns to their God and they're almost anxious to die because they're finding their way to God. Just as we start out, I want to just give you an example, put you through a little bit of an example of what it was like. Here's why the Christians were persecuted. Not because they believed in Jesus, because like in the pantheon, there were all kinds of gods up there. Pan means all or every. Theo means God. All the gods. And it wasn't a problem to worship to love Jesus. We just put him right up there next to Zeus. No problem. You can come in the pantheon. You can worship all of them, and there's your Jesus. Christians said, no, our creed says we believe in one Lord, and we will not burn incense to the pagan gods. We will not partake in paganism. And what you would do to prove that you were a Roman citizen was to burn incense to Jupiter or Zeus, one of the gods, to prove that you were one of, that you believed in the gods of Rome, and you would get a libellium. So let me just put you through a little experiment. We're all here today, and all of a sudden the Romans block off all the doors, and they pull their swords, and we're trapped in here. And they say, "Are you those Christians?" It's not a good word at the time. Are you those Christians? Well, we've had a problem in Rome lately, and we're convinced you are the ones that caused the problem. We've had a drought for a year. We've had the barbarians break down the wall, and some of our people were killed. We've had a lot of problems in the city, and we figured out why. Because all of you didn't come to the Zeus festival, and you ticked them off. And Zeus is now angry. Where were you on the Zeus fest festival, all of you? You were in your churches worshiping this Christos instead of coming and worshiping the God, the king of all the gods. And now you've made him mad. And that's why we've had the plague. The Christians became the scapegoats for anything that went wrong because the gods were angry that they had abandoned them. So you have denied Zeus and refused to burn incense to him and you have said he is not a god. So we're here to rectify the situation. I'm glad we got you all here in one place. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you all the opportunity to fix this problem. And we're going to set up an altar right over here, and it's going to have Zeus. In fact, in some of these pictures, you'll see the altar where you're support, where they're trying to get them to burn incense to, to the gods. And I'm the Roman centurion, and I'm going to set up an altar here, and I want all of you, before you leave, 
to come and burn incense to Zeus. And when you do, I will give you a libellium, which means that I'm going to give you a certificate that you are a Roman in good standing. And then you can leave. And you can go home to your home and your families, and there will be a job for you on Monday morning. However, if you don't do that, there will be other consequences. But I know you're all smart Romans, so you will all see the error of your ways, and you will capitulate. All right. Let's all step up here now, and I want you all to burn incense to Zeus or Jupiter. I said, step up here right now, every one of you. We're starting with you. Come on. But they refused the Christians. So then the centurion says, all right, I know how to deal with you folks. Brutus! And from the outside comes a 250-pound executioner with a big chopping block under one arm stained with blood from weeks and weeks of doing this and a big 50-pound sword, two-edged sword in his hand. And he sets that chopping block down right here. And he says, one, you're not leaving this building until you make a choice. And I'm going to give every one of you less than five minutes to make that choice. You either get in line to burn incense to the Caesar and to Jupiter, or you get over here in Brutus's line. So make up your minds now. Yay, Brutus. <laughs> so you got to ask yourself, this is what our brothers and sisters experienced in the Roman Empire. Ask yourself right now, which line would you actually get it to? I mean, if you saw heads being chopped off, a pile of heads are rolling out in the wheelbarrows, and dead bodies squirming on the floor, blood squirting out of their necks, and you're next in line, what are you going to choose? I'm going to say, you know what? Some people are going to say, I'm going I'm to get in that line of them burn incense. I'll just go to confession next Saturday. I have to be responsible. I have a family and a business. I can't just be irresponsible with my neck. And then Father would stand up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember Jesus said, if you deny me before me, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And now you have to make a choice which line you're going to get into. These people made that decision. And I want to take you along and show you some of the pictures. You've got them. And then we come over here, Mary with her seven sorrows. Mary suffered a kind of an internal spiritual martyrdom when she watched her son die. And these, Mary had a lot more sorrows than those seven, I tell you. So then we'll go along here. This is the next martyr who see Jesus on the cross. He's the one who died, and he said, if they killed me, do you think they're going to treat you any better? If the world loves you, then you're not my true disciples, because the world hates me and my disciples. And here you have St. Stephen, who they're stoning him. I was named after St. Stephen, and that's the way the church was named after, because he was the first Christian martyr, and he was a deacon, and he died for the faith under a, under a reign of, of rocks. A terrible way to die, by the way. And then you have St. Peter being crucified upside down in Rome, but you also see in the background other tortures. You've got A, B, C. You've got three levels over here, and you've got a saint here being buried alive. And there's Thecla being fed to the, if you see in the background, there's one with bulls. They put them out in the arena and the bulls would chase them and would, would get them. You know, Jesus said before he ascended into heaven, you will be my witnesses. Do you know what the Greek word for witness is? Martus. You will be my martus, my witnesses. And the catechism says that some of us will be witnesses with our mouths and others will be witnesses with our blood. And if these people had not done this, we wouldn't be standing here today. They paid the price. They showed the Romans that there was something worth living and dying for. And the Romans flocked to the Christian church like, like flies to honey because it was something really valuable. There was something there. It had eternal value. It was a resurrection of the body. The Romans didn't have that. It was something brand new. Now we have St. Ignatius of Antioch. Look, he's been eaten by lions. He came all the way from Antioch, which is in Syria. They brought him all the way across the Roman Empire. And when he was traveling, chained to the Roman soldiers, he wrote a letter to the Romans. And he says, I am coming to you. And I know some of you are influential. Some of you have money and political clout. But do not try to save me. I am going to become the bread of, the, of God. I will become the food of the lions. I will be like fine, fine wheat ground between their teeth. It's very Eucharistic. And I, they, when I am encased in their body and they become my tomb, then I will find my way to God, he says. 
Now, this is a this is a first century Christian that never had a New Testament, never read the Gospel of John, probably. He had the words of the apostles ringing in his ears, and he was willing to go eaten by lions because he knows there's everlasting. Now, here's a man being boiled in oil. And look in the background, you see other tortures. I'm sorry that these are covered up. They're going their store. But there's more lions being eating people. And here they're being crucified and beaten. I think this is St. Sebastian. Here's a Roman soldier, if I remember right. And they came, they came after him. And they killed him. He was a Roman soldier. Look what they're doing to this woman. You see, they're, they're ripping her breasts off with a rake. It probably was in St. Agnes, too. Now, notice, notice what the man, see the man with the white beard behind her? What's he holding up? He's holding up a statue. There's Zeus. She's saying, all you have to do is burn incense to Zeus and we'll stop it. Listen, lady, think of your life, think of your children, think of your husband. Just deny your Christ. Just burn incense to this God. It's so simple to do. And she says, no, she's looking away. She won't even look at the God. See, she's looking the other way and saying, no, I believe in Jesus Christ. Here is a woman named Blandina, 177, in Lyon, France. They brought all the Christians together in the arena. And I found that arena, if you watch our apostolic fathers handing on the faith, it's all about these martyrs. And we went there and we found that. And they, they did torture her at the stake. They had her tied. I don't want to be gory here, but it's good to know what our brothers and sisters did. If you come in, this is why this church was made. And you see, this, these are some of the really good color ones. Because they wanted you to know what our brothers and sisters suffered. They're our heroes. Some of us may have to do this if the world continues to go. Or not us, our children or our grandchildren. So she was, chained, she was chained to a pole and they tortured her. Male Roman soldiers tortured this woman naked on a stake for a whole day, threw her into prison. She said, I am a Christian. They said, if, if you deny your Christ, we'll let you go. She says, we have done no harm. I am a Christian. We've done nothing against the empire, but I will not let go of Jesus Christ. They put her in a net and let the bull push her around the, the arena in front of all the people watching. And there was a young man named Germanicus who was also there. And she was encouraging him. Some of the Christians went away at this point. Some of the Christians left. They couldn't take it anymore. They denied Christ. But to a man, when they saw their brothers and sisters dying, they all came back into the arena. And they said, we changed our mind. We are Christians. And they died with them. The courage of these people. And they had an iron chair in 177 in Lyon, France. And they would start a fire under the iron chair until it was red hot. And then they would push the people into the red chair and then roast, roast them like a hamburger until they were dead. And she was calling to all the others and saying, I'm like, said that the ones watching said she was like their mother, encouraging them to stay faithful to God. Don't die. Don't give in. Stay faithful to Christ because this pain is only for a short time, but then you'll have everlasting glory. And this is your way to God. See, the courage of these people is unbelievable. Let this go around here. They threw a bishop off a wall. There's a woman being boiled in oil. But that's why this is here. Can you imagine bringing your kids here to church on Sunday morning? And you know, this is one of the, they have weddings here all the time. People choose this place to have their weddings. So here you see a woman being boiled in oil. Here you see another lady with her breasts being cut off. This man is being burned. Can you see the fire underneath him? This, I think, is St. Lawrence was called the patron saint of comedians, believe it or not. Do you know why? Because he's being grilled. And he said to the Roman soldiers, you can turn me over now, I'm done on this side. As they're roasting him, like a steak on a grill. Here's another man being pushed into an oven. And in the background, you see whole groups of people gathered in the center where they're killing them. Another man here with weights put on his legs and hung on a cross. Another one over here. I mean, it just goes on and on with the things that they suffered. 